Hi, I'm Gary White for Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with Taylor Schlosser, who is the Marion County School Superintendent, for our update on what's going on with the Marion County School System. And as we're recording this, we're just a week away from the beginning of school. We are. Uh, next week at this time, we will have had our first official day for staff. Uh, we'll have our opening day at Marion County High School. Breakfast will be served at 745 for all staff. And we'll have an opening day speaker, and then uh, staff will head back to their buildings to do a lot of required training. Um, our students' official first day will be next Wednesday. August 3rd. Uh, August the 3rd, and uh, you should start hearing some radio spots uh, with our kids uh, welcoming everyone back. I know that also just to uh, ask motorists to be careful as uh, the school buses start rolling next week. So August 1st is the first day for staff, mm -hmm. August 3rd for students. Yes. They'll be back in session for school. And when they come, there's going to be a few staff changes in some of the different schools, right? Right. Um, as uh, you may or may not have read in the newspaper, we do have a new assistant principal at Glasscock Elementary, Matthew Reed. He mm -hmm. comes to us from uh, uh, his last job assignment was at Hardin County as an assistant principal. So we're very ha happy to welcome him to uh, Glasscock Elementary. We also have a new interim uh, principal at Marion County High School by the name of Tom Brown. Tom brings uh, 27 plus years experience and then some. Uh, he has a lot of experience as a high school principal, athletic director, various roles um, that I believe everyone will find very accommodating for the position. So. Okay, so that's the high school mm -hmm. and Glasscock, and then you have some at the administration level right, too, right? we do. We have a new early childhood director, Amy Willis, will be uh, serving in that capacity. And then we have Ms. Shelley Badgett, who will be serving as our director for exceptional children. Okay, so it's been the summer that we've been dealing with. It's been <laughs> warm and stuff, but has there been any changes to buildings and facilities much over the summer as well? Uh, not, not really. We've really just been doing a few things. Uh, we are finishing the project that the board voted on back in the winter about the roof for West Marion, so that's going to be finished up. Mostly just uh, waxing floors, um, painting, if those kinds of things. No major renovations. No major renovations. Um, our band room did receive some new carpet. I think it had been in there 20, 30 plus years. <laughs> so it was about time. So we did get some new carpet in our band room. Um, I think most schools are trying to spruce things up. The high school, um, I think, uh, has tried to make their lobby a little bit more welcoming. When you walk in the office, you'll see a few changes, but nothing, nothing in major construction. That's good. Mm -hmm. And also, over the summer, you had your school as well, or classes, I guess, right, for yes. the summer program. Absolutely. How'd that all go? Oh, that was great, and I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, we had our Summer Dream Academy. We had fantastic results from that. Lots of happy kids, uh, extended the learning for the summer, and we had all kinds of different programs for all kinds of different kids. We had camps, we had art, sports, academics, we did field trips. Um, all over all over the district so and and we had lots of great partners too and I, I want to make sure that I mention that that we have a great partnership with our public library and also our extension office mm -hmm. uh, the arts council uh, for the city um, we have a lot of partners and I don't want to leave anybody out but you and I both know that you know it just takes a lot of people to pull that off and we had mm -hmm. a wonderful program and I, I do want to mention our dream bus. I'm sure a lot of people saw the dream bus rolling through town, and I had lots of people say, when you see it, you can't help but smile. Um, we, uh, and we don't have the official numbers, but we fed almost a 1,000 children just from the dream bus. That's and uh, not only were we feeding kids on the dream bus, but we had wonderful activities for the kids. We had a great teacher on the bus, lots of volunteers. Uh, we went out to neighborhoods, so it, it was a success. Um, I have been asked, was it bigger or smaller than you anticipated? And I, I really, I didn't have, I didn't have a, an anticipation number. We just knew that we wanted to get out into the neighborhoods and into the communities mm -hmm. and um, give, give the kids an opportunity, but also to come to, to see families. We want to be a, part, a partner with the family. So. Yeah, I saw that driving around too. Mm -hmm. And I had the opportunity to go to all different parts of mm -hmm. the county yes. as well. 
we actually went to two different locations every day, five days. So over the course of a week, we went to 10 different locations. So parents knew if we were showing up in their neighborhood on Monday at one o'clock, they knew that's when we came and had some really cool activities. The day that I rode the dream bus, we made slime. The kids were mad scientists. Mm -hmm. So the kids would eat and then we would do our activity. That was that day. Uh, just a really fun time. Uh, very excited about uh, those opportunities and excited to have the kids back next week too. Right. Now, also, we want to mention there's been some discussion about, uh, speaking of facilities, of uh, the Ray House, which is over by Lebanon Elementary School, mm -hmm. that has been used in the past, and you're kind of trying to transition, can't you? Right. Um, and, you know, just to give folks some background, uh, that is a part of our facilities plan, and the facilities planning committee, committee comes together um, once every four years, and they... Uh, when they looked at that, the needs were 600000 plus to renovate that. Um, that had been in years past used for some preschool mm -hmm. at Lebanon Elementary and some extra services there. Because of the cost of renovating that building, um, the planning committee actually voted to put that down for demolition. Um, the board has recently been having that conversation about the building because there are some folks uh, that look at that for pr the preservation of the building and then obviously the uh, opportunity to just have the land and then you know do you use it again and all kinds of different things so there was a lot of discussion at the last board mm -hmm. meeting and I think the way we left that is is we wanted a committee of folks to get together to decide you know what that would look like there's a group that actually would like to buy the building for a dollar and work on that and then possibly we buy that back um, but I'm, I'm not real sure what the direction will be on that mm -hmm. but i do think it's important with as much um, support for the building yeah. and for actually keeping the property in our board of education's name that uh, we'll have a committee of folks that'll look at that and and hopefully we'll come up with a great solution that suits everyone I remember years ago uh, when uh, Terry Ward was still living, we did a history segment in different buildings, and that was one of the buildings he mentioned, so I know there is some history and mm -hmm. stuff, but it's not a... It's not, a it's not on the National, national Registry. Uh, right. That's right. Okay. That's and that was one of the things I want the community to know. That's one of the things the committee knew before they put that down there. And so that committee was a large group of folks. We had architects and folks like that in from uh, the Department of Education to help us with that. So because of the cost, um, our, the Lebanon Fire Department said, you know, they could use that as a training site, uh, but they're, you know, but they're, you know, it's kind of mixed emotions. You know, it's a lot of money. It's a great building. It's a great location, good piece of property. And Lebanon Elementary does have some traffic issues. So you, you hate to lose the property itself. So again, I, I think a committee of folks coming together will come up with a good solution. Okay. You also recently had some visit from some estate officials, correct? Yes. With the tech school? Yes, we did. Doing? We had uh, Secretary Hal Heiner came to town. He and some folks from the Department of Education, and we had a large group from both Washington and Marion counties to talk about things that we can do to improve technical education. Uh, both communities um, share the facility. We have mm -hmm. the building, but both, both communities send their students there. And we want to just make sure that we're providing the opportunities and the skills that we need, not just for our children during the day, but we also talked about evening classes and the possibility of even using that facility to help train inmates so when they transition out, um, they have an opportunity to have a successful transition. And there's a lot of jobs that need to be filled and a lot of jobs with a lot of skill. And obviously our technical school is going to be integral part of our community being successful and continuing to grow. Now speaking of the inmate situation at the past fiscal court meeting, uh, Jailer Barry Brady mentioned that there is a grant that I believe Marion County may be able to take part in with regards to training inmates that he's going to work with right. economic development as well as the school board for that. So that's part of this program? That is. That was one of the things we talked about. And there's also another grant out there uh, through workforce development that we can partner with the community as well 
to try to get some more funding in here. And mm -hmm. I think that's what it's very important for the community to know. Anytime we have an opportunity to apply for a grant to get get those monies in here, that's that's what we want to do. I mean, that's important and uh, it gives us another opportunity to partner with other people. Um, it's it's not about one organization doing it all, but all of us working together. And I think that's what's so unique about this part of the area. Absolutely. Everybody working that's together. Right. Now, also, coming up later in the fall, and I believe there's a discussion now, there will be a vote that's going to be on the ballot in November regarding the, what's called the nickel tax. Yes, Can you just kind of recap the situation there for us and how that's moving along? Yes. Um, uh, I think uh, most folks will know that we are moving forward with the uh, vote. There was a petition, and it was declared valid. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the, the issue will go to, to vote for the citizens. Um, it's the the next step as far as we are concerned is our board will decide what the language on the b ballot will look like. Uh, we will have a special called election for that. Um, and Gary, what I would say to the community is that uh, we have a great... You're going to meeting. have a special called meeting. S special call meeting. Right, not an election. Right, a yeah. special call meeting, I'm sorry, yeah. to determine what the language is. Right, yeah. The vote will actually be in November. At the general election. At the yeah. general election. Okay. But you know what I would want to say about the nickel tax is that uh, this tax is for facilities only. Mm -hmm. It cannot be used for anything else. This is just about facilities. And the way school works is like in most uh, government agencies, there are certain parts of money that only is allowed to be spent on certain things. And so this tax would go into our facilities you know, currently we, we have around $4 million of bonding potential, but our needs are around $40 million. And we do have a great school system. Our, our kids are performing well. But we have kids that are having classes in the hallway. We have teachers who travel on a cart. We have teachers who are teaching classes in an atrium. We have kids that are having uh, counseling services in closets. We have stages that are being used as a classroom. We have buildings where the gymnasium and the cafeteria are together. Lebanon Elementary is an example of where we have a cafeteria that serves almost 400 plus children, but was made for around 200. And so, you know, we have some needs, and this is a way that if our community supports this, then we would, you know, the legislators could actually match this nickel. And, you know, we would go from 4 million to 19 million, and with the match, it could go up to 26 million. And so when you look at the needs, uh, you know, this, this uh, additional revenue could be very helpful in getting our children in the kind of buildings they deserve. And I think our kids deserve the best. This is a wonderful community. Uh, it's a great place to work, it's a great place to live, and uh, all of our schools need, need to have that opportunity. And there are surrounding districts around us that are building schools or have built new schools. And, you know, it's my opinion that an address should not dictate the type of school that our kids go to. So that will be at a special meeting to determine the language, and then the vote will occur in November yes. at the general election, mm -hmm. whether to allow for the right. nickel to go through or not. Uh, also, before we close, something exciting and fun is going to be happening at the high school, too. The movie is going to be shot, I believe, at the high school in St. Charles. Is that correct? That's right. Some people in Springfield are going to be using right. the facilities here. Right. Uh, some folks from Los Angeles, California yeah. have uh, made their way to central Kentucky, and they are shooting a movie. And they have asked to use parts of our area tech center, the high school, our football field, and St. Charles. So we have negotiated some dates and times and things like that with them. So they're very pleased to be here. And uh, uh, it's, uh, I'll, be, I'll be excited to see what the final product looks like as far as the movie is concerned. But it should be a, a good, good for all Central Kentucky. Yeah, so it'll be shooting in Springfield as well as Lebanon, mm -hmm. and uh, that'll be coming up, I guess, in August, right, mm -hmm. for the actual dates. So we'll see how that goes. So mm -hmm. maybe the high school will be on the big screen eventually. <laughs> but again, I've been here with Taylor Schlosser, who is the Marion County School Superintendent. It's been Gary White for Central Kentucky Television.